Good morning, everybody. Uh, this is Pablo coming back at you again on day three of Holy Week. And uh, we are studying the Word. We're going through uh, really just the book of John. Um, just because John was there um, whenever Jesus was sitting around the table. This mostly happened on Thursday when Jesus is sitting at the table with his disciples. And they are um, partaking of the Passover meal. And as they're sitting there, Jesus reveals so many secrets, so much meat, so much bread of life towards them. And so what we want to do is we just want to go through the whole thing and we want to try to, or as much as we can during this weekend. Um, the last couple of days, I started back, I believe, in John 12. Um, and now we're in John 15 and we're at the famous the vine and branches um, part wherever Jesus is talking uh, talking to the um, disciples and talking to all of us who would be his disciples soon and saying, uh, I'm the vine, you're the branches. And so I really wanted to get into that. So let's uh, hop into that on John 15. And it says, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it would be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Okay. So first of all, Jesus speaks to, to these people in a very agricultural um, terminology because of the society that they're in, right? They, it's a very agricultural society. And so anything having to do with vineyards, they would understand because Israel is full of vineyards, especially during that, that time. And so he says, I, I am the vine. Okay, I am that main vine, which as if, if you think of a tree, it, that's the trunk, right? I am the vine. He goes, you are the branches that come off of the vine. My father is a gardener. If you are in me, but you are bearing no fruit, he's going to cut you off. But if you are in me and you're bearing fruit, he's going to prune you. There's a difference between cutting off and pruning. The cutting off is a complete shut off. You're cut off from the vine itself. If you cut the branch from the trunk, or in this case, the branch from the vine, that branch is going to die because you're cutting it from its source of life. You're cutting it from that place that it receives energy, it receives strength, it receives nutrition. And so therefore, that branch is going to dry up and it's gonna be withered away. And Jesus tells us in a second what happens to that. He goes, but if you remain in me, if you are in me, then my words will remain in you, my life will remain in you, and my Father will not cut you off, but my Father, who is the gardener, will prune you. So cutting off goes from the root. Well, not the root. You understand what I mean? It goes from the from the source, from the from the actual connection with the vine. You'll be cut off there, but the pruning happens further in, and it's not a complete cut off. It's a it's a it's a trim, so that it'll grow longer and it'll grow stronger and it'll produce even more fruit. So it feels almost like a cut off, but it's not. It's really a prune. That way you will grow the correct way in the master or in this case, the gardener can really direct your growth and can produce more fruit from you. So here's the crazy thing. You can't produce fruit yourself. The spirit within you produces the fruit. You can't, you are not able to produce fruit. That's why Paul calls it the fruit of the spirit. The spirit produces it within you. You just have to abide. That's it. You just have to be there. When was the last time that you saw the branch doing all the job, all the work? doing doing the, the 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 strengthening part of doing the growing part no it's the vine that that makes that branch grow that pushes that branch out so it's us and jesus it's the same thing it's not about working hard it's not about trying harder it's about surrendering more it's about surrendering more the bible never says try harder the bible says surrender yield remain in me abide in me and i will abide in you that's what it's all really about it's about remaining in jesus and allowing jesus to remain in us for us to be in communion with the lord and everything else flows from there the spirit of the lord will flow from there but when we think that we can create the righteousness within us when we think that we can do things i can do all things through me who gives me strength then 
we end up burning ourselves out. We end up falling away from the faith. And, and so then Jesus says, remain in me and I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It cannot be done by yourself. You have to stop trying so hard. You just have to yield and surrender to the loving, tender arms of the Lord. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Very simple. Why do we forget the simplicity of the gospel? Why do we forget how simple it really is? All it's about is staying in Jesus. That's it. Just being in the Lord. Denying yourself, picking up your cross, and following him. That's what, that's what a lot of the church today has forgotten. And thank Jesus. I thank the Holy Spirit that he has put the right people in my life. Either people personally or people um, virtually that I watch and that I follow that have fed into my spirit and that have really grilled this into me. That it, the, the Christian life is about carrying the cross. The Christian life is about self-denial. Denying yourself, picking up your cross and following me. Jesus says, if you want to be my disciple, you must first deny yourself pick up your cross and follow me. This is not once you reach a certain level. This is not for advanced Christians. This is the first thing. The first thing is self-denial. And the branch has to deny itself. I will not grow at my own pace. I will not grow wherever I want. I am completely submitted to the branch, to the vine, and especially to the gardener. Verse five, I am the vine. If you are the branches, if you remain in me and I remain in you, you will bear much fruit, for apart from me, you can do nothing. Apart from me, says Jesus, you are not able to do anything. When you live a surrendered life to the Lord, you have no other option than to be completely hooked to him. You cannot do anything apart, of him, apart from him. If you do not remain in me, so here's the warning. If you don't remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and it withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. I think we all know what that means. If we don't remain in the Lord, we're going to be cut off. He already said that, right? The gardener cuts off the branch. That branch is going to lose its life. It's going to wither away. It's going to die. It's going to dry out. And then the gardener is going to come around. He's going to pick up all of that, all those dead, withered branches, and he's going to throw them away into the fire. And this, is, this is speaking about eternal damnation. This is talking about hell. He's talking about if you don't remain in me, you will suffer the consequences. Not because God wants you to. Remember, hell was not made for you and me. Hell was not made for humans. Hell was made for Satan and his demons. And that is where they will be eternally damned and eternally condemned and punished. Okay, so hell is not Satan's capital city. He has no authority there. That is his place of torment and torture. And he, he, he does not go there and then come here to earth. No, he, he runs loosely around the earth. But that is the place of eternal damnation. And so the Lord says, if you don't have me in your heart, if you don't actually abide in me, then that's the place where you're going to end up going. Because he literally went out of his way and gave his life. And he said, over my dead body, literally, will you go to hell? However, we choose to go there. As humans, we have made the decision to go there. We make the decision. Not so with you. Not so with me. We have decided to abide in him. This also shows me that you can make the decision for Jesus, yet fall away from the Lord. You can fall away from the Lord. We see this in the parable of the sower. But as well here, he says, you, you were in me. You were part of the, uh, of the vine. However, you did, weren't producing any fruit. Therefore, you were cut off. You must produce fruit. You must produce fruit. This is not something for advanced Christians. This is a requirement. You must produce fruit. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. So if you remain in Jesus, you ask and it will be done for you. You know why? David says, Re rejoice in the Lord, delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Why does he say that? You'd be like, Pablo, but the heart is deceitful above all things. And that's true. But that's why you must first delight yourself in the Lord. That's why first you must abide in the Lord. Because when you do, when you delight yourself in the Lord, when you abide in the Lord, you have now become one with him. And now the desires that your heart is going to ask for are going to be his desires. And so the Lord can trust to actually answer that 
prayer petition because you have now aligned yourself to him and he will fulfill his word. But he will not answer the prayers of a carnal Christian. Pastor Bill Johnson says the Lord will rather bless an earthly person, a worldly person, before he blesses a worldly Christian. Because he will not reward this behavior. He's a good father. He will not do that. He will not reward this behavior. And so we must make sure, you must make sure that your heart is in him, that you are abiding in the Lord Jesus. This is to my father's glory, verse 8, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now, remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in His love. Okay, you have to keep in mind, everything we've been reading for the last few days is all in the same city, so it all connects. We read at least three times before this that Jesus says, if you love me, follow my commandments. If you love me, follow my commandments. If you love me, follow my commandments. Now He reveals why we must follow His commandments. He says, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. How do we remain in his love? If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love. So he's saying, follow what I tell you. Because if you do, you will remain in my love. And if you remain in my love, you will abide with, the, with me as I abide with my Father. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you. So that my joy, says Jesus, may be in you. So if you want the joy of the Lord, you have to obey his commands. That way you abide in him. And that way you become one with him, just as he is one with his father. Jesus was just showing us an example through his life of the way we are to live our life. That is why the Christian life is just the life of Jesus being lived through us. But we cannot do that without the Holy Ghost. We cannot do that without the Holy Spirit. It is the Spirit of Jesus that abides in us, that leads us to all truth. He just said that. We talked about it yesterday in, in John 14. He leads us into the truth. He leads us into all righteousness. But we must have the Holy Spirit or else we cannot be like Jesus. We will not be like Jesus. I have told you all this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. You cannot have joy outside of Jesus. My command is this very simple love each other as i have loved you greater love has no one than this to lay one's life down for one's friend keep in mind the next day is good friday the next day is the day that jesus surrenders his life you are my friends if you do what i command you want to be jesus's friend do what he commands you i no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business Instead, I have called you friends. For everything I learned from my Father, I have been made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit. You thought you said yes to Jesus. Now, he said yes to you first. Hmm. He said yes to you first. Praise the Lord. He said yes to you first. And then you said yes to him. You did not choose me. I have chosen you and I have appointed you that you may go and bear good fruit. So why did he choose us to bear good fruit? It's that simple. He called us that we may bear fruit. If not, what was the point of him calling us? He called us that we may abide in him. So the whole reason why Jesus has called us, it's not to extend, expand the kingdom, though that's part of right that great commission. But you can't expand the kingdom if you don't abide in him first. Jesus calls us to be with him. It's as simple as that. He calls us to be with him. I says, I no longer call you servants for the servant does not know the master's business. So in other words, you are not an outsider anymore. Okay, it's great to be a servant of the Lord and we must be servants, especially servant leaders as he's taught us to be. However, there is a deeper level now, he says. No longer are you serving me. You are now my friends. So I have a friend of mine who says something wonderful. He says, servants have access to the house of the master that other people don't have. And that's very true. I would like to add a second part to that. Servants have access to the parts of the master's house that nobody else has. However, the friend has access to the heart of the master that the servant does not have. 
think about that. The friend has access to the heart of the master that the servant will never hear. The servant will never hear. The servant will have access to the back room. The servants were the ones that saw Jesus' first miracle. But they don't know the heart of the master. That's why he says here, Instead, I have called you friends. For everything I learned from my father, I've been known to you. The servant does not know his master's business. He does not know his master's business, his mind, and his heart. But the friend does. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you might go and bear fruit. Fruit that will last. Fruit that will last. That longevity, that being able to have that fruit and make it last, only comes through the abiding of the Holy Spirit. So that you, whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give to you. This is my command. Love each other. Love each other. That is the command of the Lord. And I'm going to leave it here for today. And then tomorrow we'll talk about, we'll, we'll go actually jump into verse chapter 16, I think. Maybe we'll do the rest of 15 and what Jesus talks about, about being in the world and how if you're in the world, and the world accepts you, it's because you belong to the world and you don't belong to Jesus. If you're completely falling in line with the world ways and people don't reject you because of the message of the gospel, it's probably because they're not seeing the message of the gospel in you because the world automatically rejects the message of the gospel. It is foolishness. Paul says the gospel is foolishness to the world. It makes no sense. How would Jesus come into the, into the city riding on a donkey? That makes no sense. He should come in with a white stallion he should come in with a crown on his head. But he gave up the diadem of heaven. He gave up the crown of heaven for a crown of thorns. So Jesus did all this for you and I. Jesus did everything for you. He did everything for me. The message of the gospel makes no sense to the world, but it is the righteousness and the power of God for us. Praise the Lord. So God bless you. I love you. As some of you, I don't even know who you are. But if you need prayer, if you want to reach out, please look at the description below and and reach out. That's our, my email address. Reach out. Please share this with somebody. Go back and look at the previous two days. We will be coming. I have two more episodes to go of this uh, Holy Week special edition. So if you have uh, somebody who needs to hear this, you've been blessed. Share it with some other people. That way they can be blessed. I love you. Have a wonderful day. And abide in Jesus. And let him abide in you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.